Hi, my name's Damien. I'm one of the senior application engineers here at Papercut, and I'm going to take you through the installation of a Papercut site server. First, let's set the scene. We're doing this in the context of a financial institution with offices in New York and San Francisco. This machine here with the red backdrop is my print server in San Francisco. And this machine here with the blue backdrop is an application server in New York. As you see, I've already got Papercut installed on the application server in New York, and I've already gone to the extent of upgrading this to Papercut version 15.0. Within that as well, I've also licensed the application for site servers. So back on our machine in San Francisco, you'll also see that this machine is currently only configured with the Papercut print provider. But we're going to upgrade this and also install the Papercut site server componentry as well. To do that, it's no harder than running the Papercut MF installer. With that, you'll see our familiar wizard. Moving through the wizard will give us the option to not only upgrade the secondary print server installation, but install the site server. It will then warn us that we've already got secondary print server components on here. It will also let us know that it's going to reconfigure the secondary print server to no longer talk to our New York office, but rather talk to our resilient server here, the Papercut site server in the San Francisco office. And then we choose install. And in what is only a matter of moments, the Papercut site server has been installed. You'll notice as with all Papercut, installations, we then have an option to complete our configuration through a Papercut web interface. Now there's only some simple questions that are going to be asked for us to complete the site server installation. Firstly, let's give the site a name. So we're going to call this San Francisco. It's then going to ask us which application server we want to connect this site server to. Quite simply, we're going to point this machine to the New York server. Now, out of curiosity, if I didn't get my host name right, it would give me an error to help us through the process. Key it in correctly, and you'll see that we'll connect back to the application server. We then need to provide some credentials that will have administrative access over the application server. Again, we get these wrong, and it will help us through the process. And that is as hard as it is to connect a site server to an application server. What you'll also notice is that we also have a new service installed called the Papercut site server as well. In addition to this, our print provider has already been configured as well to no longer talk to our New York server, but to talk to our local site server. So the print server now talks to the site server and if the site server can't communicate with the application server, then the site server will fill the role of the application server to the local print server. Back to the UI here of our local machine, what you'll also notice is that the import of data has already started and our site server is happily connected. We can also use the login link here on the local site server page to log into our application server in New York also. You'll notice that we then have a new Sites tab here in Papercut. Clicking on the Sites tab will show us the individual site servers that we have installed and what the current status is. At any point we can come into these records and we can optionally take the site offline if we want to make sure that our site is fully resilient against any network outages. Back on the Sites tab, we also have the offline policies as well. Offline policies are covered in detail in our manual but they effectively define how each individual site will behave in the unlikely event that the application server is unavailable. What we can also do is we can go to our devices and we can find an existing device that Papercut goes looking for. In this case, we've got a Fuji Xerox device connected. By clicking on the device, we can then optionally migrate this device from talking to the New York server to be, have its connections provided by the San Francisco server. So we have this new option down here called Hosted On. Currently it's hosted by the application server, this device. All I need to do is click Change, choose the San Francisco site and OK. And the device is now automatically reconfigured 
to no longer talk directly to the application server in New York, but to preference communication to the site server in San Francisco. We're now in the perfect position that if we were to lose connection between our San Francisco site and our New York site, San Francisco would be able to continue business functions of print, copy, fax and scan.